Tonight on Free Keen TV, a homeowner in Massachusetts resists paying property taxes and an independent journalist has a run-in with Judge Burke. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Free Keen TV. I'm Jason Rapture, an anchor for Free Keen TV. Every Monday at 7 p.m. we'll be covering topics in Keene and the surrounding areas that may not have received the attention they deserve. Free Keen TV is a community-oriented TV show that values your input and suggestions. If you have news tips or comments, feel free to send them to us at tv at freekeen.com. Tonight's top story involves a local independent journalist named Adamo Freeman. This report was filed by our producer, James Schlesinger. Hi everybody, my name is Adamo. And uh, this past week I had an incident where I was at the Keene District Court. Uh, my intention there was to interview uh, Judge Burke, who a few days prior to that, or actually the day before, had sentenced another activist, Bo Davis, to five days for contempt of court. You're in contempt, oh, you're in contempt for the first incident. You're in contempt further for continuing to fight. The court sentences you to five days of the House of Corrections. So I went to the district court at around 8 a.m. to talk with him. And when he came into work, I asked him three questions. Judge Burke, can I ask you a few questions about a hat and how that constitutes contempt? You think people want to pay for someone to be in jail for five days for wearing a hat? It's kind of ridiculous to waste taxpayer money on something like that, isn't it? Sir? I just want to have a conversation. Bailiff, Bailiff, this person is threatening me about a decision that I just made. I'm not threatening you. I have, I'm asking him questions. Did I threaten you? He's threatening as a, as a criminal offense. What was my threat? Come on, sir, you're in custody. What was my threat? You come in custody, yes, sir. Man, this is crazy. None of which he replied to. He never said a word until he talked to the bailiffs and said, that man, referencing myself, uh, threatened me and instructed them to arrest me. Um, at that time, I was detained, according to the bailiffs, until the Keene police showed up. Uh, the Keene police then arrived, said they were investigating uh, somebody threatening a judge. I asked them to look at the video. They chose not to, but instead to talk with the judge. After about 10, 15 minutes, they came back um, with a law book, I presume, some sort of book, and said that I was improperly influencing the judge, and therefore I would have to go down to the police station to process. Um, I voluntarily went along with that, went down to the police station all the time. I thought I was going to get a pink slip and uh, sent down my way, released. But um, after the processing of my name, fingerprints, photos, and stuff like that, they instructed me that I was going back to the court for a bail hearing because my charge was a felony. And that time, I again begged the uh, police officers in the station to watch the video because about the minute interaction I had with Judge Burke um, is all caught on video. You can see that there was nobody threatening, that I was polite, and that he never even acknowledged uh, my presence or any uh, reaction to my actual questions. So went back to court. Um, they called in another judge to do my bail hearing. They, uh, the state argued that I needed to have $5,000 cash bond, or excuse me, bail. Um, because of another case in Manchester and the fact that I don't have a permanent address and I have to them a lengthy rap sheet. Even though in all of my alleged crimes or appearances in courts have all been for something that, was, that had no violence or no victim. And on top of that, I've never missed a court date to begin with. Uh, fortunately, through uh, some of the projects that I partake in with like LibreonTour.com, CopLock.org, and FreeKeen.com, uh, a supporter was kind enough to bail me out so that I could prepare and uh, manage some of my other work tasks until my uh, upcoming court case, a probable cause hearing on July 7th. One of the interesting things that happened to me while at the uh, Cheshire County Jail, or House of Corrections, um, while I was being, a few hours before I was bailed, uh, Officer Peliquin, the arresting officer, uh, came into the police station. He is a keen police officer. Um, he came in and wanted me to sign a consent form for the video. And as we were hashing out some of the details, as in I would be called and contacted and this footage can be looked at, et cetera, um, he, I asked him if he had seen the video yet. And he kind of looked at me and said, yeah, I have. And I said, what did you think? And he first said, well, you gave me permission, which I did, and I'm fine with that, that they looked at it. I actually wanted them to look at it sooner. 
But um, he said, my personal opinion, you shouldn't be here, which is as close to an apology as I think you can get from a police officer who's brought someone to jail. I feel that he, even him, know, even he knows that Burke might have abused his power in this situation. Um, also, my conversations after my release of jail with the district attorney, Chris McLaughlin, he has also said that uh, he's seeing the video and that he's not going to non-process it now, which I don't know if he was referencing any, but we consider it later. Um, I'm pretty convinced that once the video is shown in court, there will be no probable cause. So uh, it's interesting to see everyone take their roles and kind of, you know, the police had to defend the judge from the start. So they had to take me to jail. They didn't want to question him because that would have problems for them in future cases that they would bring to the court. The same with the district attorney. He doesn't want to non-process this now because future cases for him in court might have problems and uh you know but they all have a conscience regardless of what they say and they're, they're starting to think about it and this video is very clear i was more than polite and not aggressive i was walking behind him and you know there's really no reason for anyone to be in a cage for the actions that i had when i asked tim peliquin if he had watched the video he had said to me you know sometimes you guys and i partook you guys to mean free staters um, as that's what they reference us as um, he said, when you guys say you are polite, sometimes it's not so much how I would see polite as, or sometimes you guys throw some vulgar language in there. But he said, this time you were over the top. Uh, you were definitely polite, courteous, and uh, not threatening at all. So, I'm, you know, and that's, that's why I believe in video and using video as a tool to hold individuals, whether they work for the state or not, uh, accountable for their actions because videos do not lie. Everything is recorded. You can hear what the people say. You can take their demeanor. And uh, it's a very powerful tool for accountability. What I'd really like to see happen is members of the community speak out. Come forward with uh, your grievance stories of Judge Berg, how he hasn't been fair, and highlight the subjectiveness of his job. And, you know, as a community, we can definitely hold this man accountable as opposed to the uh, system that, is, that has made him and that continues to protect him. So, you know, any of those avenues I'm going to try because for far too long, uh, Burke has caged people in contempt for 90 days, 60 days, five days, uh, double fines, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, enough's enough. So it's really about time that, you know, we fight back and try to, you know, get some sort of justice into the King District Court. Part of the news show involves opinion and analysis. For that, we turn to Lance Weber and Heike Cursor. Could you both give the viewers a little information about yourselves? Sure. Thanks, Jason. My name is Lance Weber. I'm a civil rights attorney with a local nonprofit called the Human Rights Defense Center. And I'm Heike Cursor. I was born and raised in New Hampshire, and I'm an advocate for liberty and freedom. So let's get down to business. What did you think about the video with Adema? I think the video that we just saw uh, illustrates two very important points. Uh, one is the raw power that only a small handful of people hold in the uh, Keene community. Basically, you've got a city of about 22 to 25,000 people, yep. and you can probably count on one hand the number of people who would be able to say to a, an individual with the power to arrest, arrest this person, and for those people carrying out those actions not to ask any questions, just to simply obey the command and put someone under arrest. And there's no repercussion for arresting someone for actually not breaking a law, is there? Well, there usually is some sort of repercussion for that sort of uh, action. Um, I don't know what exactly is going to happen in this case. It's hard to say. I do know that someone has filed a police report uh, claiming that there was a false report made by the judge in this situation. Um, my understanding is that that report has been referred to the Attorney General's Office for review. Okay, well, perfect. Thank you, Lance and Heike. For our next story, we turn our cameras south to Bondsville, Massachusetts, and this report on the struggles faced by a homeowner who feels he doesn't own la his land while property taxes seem like a rent payment to the town. It's Mark Edge coming to you live from Bondsville, Massachusetts. I'm here with uh, Jay Noon. Um, this is we're reporting for Free Keen TV, and I uh, just got some questions for Jay. Jay, what's going on here? There's going to be a home invasion sponsored by the town of Palmer. 
Uh, simply put, uh, I bought this land here um, under the impression that I own it. Uh, and then all of a sudden they, they tell me I got to pay some kind of tax uh, for my own land. Now it's, it's like we're all back to slaves. You, you can't own land, I guess. They said they were, um, they were going to be here this morning to kick you out of your house? Yeah, they left a notice uh, uh, this past Friday, a 48-hour notice to evict. And then uh, the chief of police showed up here yesterday to tell me he was going to be here at 10 o'clock to remove me from my house. What time is it now? It's 9.30. Well, we've seen a few local uh, cruisers. The local Gestapo has driven by a few times. Um, well, he said he'd be here. I guess we'll see what happens. I mean, I have no idea. He just might wait till we all leave and then, uh, you know, show up here at midnight and, and uh, throw me out of the house. Who knows? But I have here a judgment that uh, I'll hold it as still as I can here. And you'll notice that there's no signature on the bottom right. Uh, the little stamp scribble is just means true attest copy. Uh, under the rules of civil procedure in Massachusetts, the judgment must have a signature on it. So anyways, they, they violate their own civil procedure. Um, and on June 9th, Judge Pat Patricia Poehler accepted this as evidence. The Massachusetts, you've got some uh, citations here from the Massachusetts Constitution that I found to be very uh, um, interesting. Now, this is obviously the highest law of the land here in, in uh, the state of Massachusetts, at least beneath the uh, U.S. Constitution. What does it say here? You know, you have to have a jury trial before they can take property. Article 12 of the Massachusetts Constitution says, uh, no subject shall be deprived of his property or privileges or immunities, but by judgment of his peers and the law of the land. Uh, also, Article 15 states that uh, in all controversies concerning property, um, the parties have a right to jury trial and this method shall be held sacred unless in causes arising on the high seas. It, it sounds to me like you've got your uh, your legal stuff uh, signed up. What's this been like for your family? I see you've got your cat out here on the lawn in a, in a box ready to go. Um, you know, t tell me about uh, the, the heartache that you guys have been dealing with. Well, I mean, I got a, a tenant who I rent the other side to. Um, he's pretty upset. He's a good tenant, always paid his rent on time. Uh, you know, I might have to give him a, a little cash back on his rent. I mean, how often does that happen? Uh, but uh, all the paperwork says 3157. He lives at 3159, and the chief of police here is telling him yesterday he's evicting him too. He didn't even get any notice. What do you think is going to happen here today at 10 o'clock? What I think they're doing is, I'm, is I think they're bluffing, and I'm calling their bluff. You know, every time they take somebody down, every time they evict somebody, every time you know a cop pulls somebody over that isn't wanted for a crime they they are uh, they're proving that they own people <clears throat> all right I'm calling Angus Rushlow who left this notice for me he's a constable Good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, hello uh, this is uh, Joseph noon and uh, this call may be recorded uh, is this the constable's office yes it is is uh, Angus Rushlow available? Yes, I'm speaking. Oh, this is Angus? Yes. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> I am here. I have uh, the 48-hour notice that you yes. you left on my door. Yes. And I, uh, I mailed you one, too. Yep. Well, okay. Well, anyways, uh, I'm just calling to inform you that it's uh, very much past uh, 10 o'clock. It might even be past 11 o'clock. And yes, yeah, and uh, you're being uh, notified that you're um, in default of your own notice. No, it's not in default. I don't have to, uh, a specific time that I have to serve it. It just has to be done uh, today. Oh well, it says hereby notified Tuesday, June twenty eighth at ten a.m. I will serve or levy. Yes, and that means that uh, I can come out there at 10 o'clock or thereafter. Actually, I have 10 days. Oh, you have you have 10 days. It doesn't say that on your notice. How come no, that's I left know out? It is, but on the, on the actual levy, it does. Well, well, where, where, where is the actual levy? Well, I have to serve that to you. Oh. 
When? When you gonna? Do you want me to come out of the survey now? Yes, that'd be wonderful. All right. Well, I'll have to evict you from the property. Well, come on over. Okay. Hold the phone just a second. Okay, I'm back. I'm trying to get in touch with the town attorney. I've got to discuss a couple issues with him. Okay. Well, Hello? could you call me back? I certainly can. Very good, then. I'll, I'll wait for your phone call. All right, I will call you back. Thank you. And thank you for calling me. Yep. So we're here with a renter. What's your name? My name is Edward Mangowski. Have they threatened to kick you out? Um, yesterday morning, I woke up to the chief of police of Palmer talking to my landlord, Joseph Noon. The chief of police instructed me that I needed to remove all my items that were important to me from the house within uh, 22 hours at that point. And um, I complied, but I, uh, I also understand that it's probably not lawful that the town of Palmer is trying to evict me from my house forcibly today. I'm self-employed and make jewelry. I'm hard, I work hard, I pay my rent. It's, it's this whole situation is kind of criminal, or it really is criminal when it comes down to it. So what's going to happen if they do decide to come here today and kick you guys out on the street? What, do you, what, do you, what are you going to do? I have um, already removed my stuff to a couple of my friends' house in the area. I'm thankful that my community actually is there for me uh, when the government really isn't. I you think you've got some kind of legal recourse um, here because your uh, residence wasn't listed on any of the paperwork? Um, and it's only accountable for 3157 Main Street and all of the tenants of, or all of the other occupants of 3157 Main Street. And I live in 3159 Main Street. I don't really understand why the chief of police would tell me that he would have to forcibly remove me from the house. Also, if I've never received um, any kind of information relative to me being evicted. So, um... It sounds, so you have gotten no paperwork, or you did get some paperwork yesterday from the sheriff. I'm, I'm a little confused. The only paperwork I've ever seen has come from my landlord. Trying to find out what's going on. Ian and Pete have just returned from the, well, adventures elsewhere. I'll let them tell you. All right, so we went down the street to the uh, town of Palmer offices where the police department and the city manager and pretty much everybody is located. Um, and our intention was to basically ask them, you know, how they feel about stealing people's property from them. So it was just a big fiasco, a bunch of people running away from cameras, ignoring uh, the cameras, etc. The police chief did end up talking to us, uh, um, so he, ta he actually did end up speaking to us and basically said that it's, it's going to be the sheriff's office that's going to be, you know, coming out, although they may, kind of hinted that they may be assisting uh, in the process. Obviously, they wouldn't tell us when anything was going to happen. So we attempted to go to the sheriff's office, and on the way there, we saw a message about there being multiple cop cars around here, so we turned around and came back. So you, you never made it to the sheriff's office? Well, we went out to the uh, the jail in uh, Ludlow, and we were told uh, that they, yes, they are part of the sheriff's uh, arm, but uh, we need to go to Springfield to uh, talk with the folks who do uh, who would serve this sort of thing. But uh, we started making our way out there, but like Ian said, we thought we'd double back and, and be here in case we could be of help. But but uh, being out down at the town of uh, Palmer uh, City Hall, man, at one point there was uh, two bureaucrats and, and three people with badges behind a locked door that wouldn't talk with us. You know, it was, uh, they were scampering around, no one wanted to comment. And so they can kick out, uh, kick people out of their homes, their children, their dogs, their pets. They can, uh, you can hurt people in the process, they can do whatever they want, but it's, it's not violence, it's not theft, no. as long as it's done underneath the, the guise of government. Right, she said it's peaceful, what they're doing. Mark Edge, Free Keen TV, we're out here with uh, Joe Noon's brother, Josh Noon. Uh, Josh, you, you've got a band, I've, I've seen you play a couple of times, what's it called? Uh, the band is called The Federal Crime. What kind of music do you guys play? We're like, a, um, I'd say acoustic rock, more like rock probably. I'd say it's rock. Gotcha. Now, um, your brothers here, the, uh, the, the authorities in, um, here in Palmer have uh, threatened to take his home from him. How's that affecting your family? Well, we're, we're all pretty upset about it. Jay's, uh, Jay's, you know, I'm proud he's my big brother. He's always helped me out with everything. So as far as guys go who <laughs> deserve this kind of thing, I guess no one does, but Jay, uh, Jay's a really good guy, and he's always willing to help people out, so now people are just going to have to help him, help him out, I guess. And You guys have come down from Keene and everything and brought some people with you, and that's amazing. He really appreciates it.
Now, I've seen your dad, your mom, your grandma out here. Um, it's, it's been quite a convention. Do, uh, your, your whole family, just kind of the, the patriot movement, where's this come from? Um, well, I don't know if you call it a patriot movement. We're just kind of independent people who just want to live life free, you know. Um, I wouldn't generally call us, I guess my dad would probably consider himself more of a patriot, and I just consider myself more of just a free human being, you know, just an independent person. Thanks a lot, Josh. Jay, uh, we interviewed you earlier. It was uh, prior to 10 a.m. The the some order that you had from the bureaucrats there claimed that they were going to arrive here at 10 a.m. And uh, what happened? Well, we've been hanging out and they haven't shown up yet. So uh, what we did is uh, I called the constable and I informed him that he was in default uh, of his own 48-hour notice of his own order. So um, what's your expectation is what's going to happen here in the future? Well, who knows? They might come give me an early wake-up call, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, I don't know. Um, they may try again tomorrow. Uh, I, I really have no clue uh, what's going on. I mean, they just might be waiting it out. Uh, but actually, my real expectation, as I said in the first interview, is that they're bluffing because they want me to go. The chief of police come over here and, and ask me several times to go to go ask the district court that issued the eviction for a stay. Well, I never ask courts for anything, um, and I don't enter their jurisdiction, and I didn't during the uh, eviction hearing. So I, I really think they got nowhere to go. I, I, I think they just there's nowhere from the go. Well, Jay, we we hope and we and Keen hope uh, hope you the very best and uh, good luck and get please give us a call give us a call if something happens. Where can people go to find out more about what's going on um, and get updates? Well, uh, I just got on uh, Free Keen Forum actually last night, set up a thing there. I'm going to be pretty active on there. You could go to my uh, Facebook page, you know, J Noon, just search it. I'm right there. J A Y N O O N E. That's correct. But my Facebook page, I'll put updates. Jay, thanks, and, and the best of luck to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mark and James, for that report. Lance, what do you make of the situation that Jay Noon is in? Well, I think uh, one thing that's very apparent about the video that we just watched was uh, the common fallacy of what they call property ownership here in the United States. Um, <clears throat> there are many people who would believe that they actually own the property in which they live. And, um, well, I want to jump in. Um, apparently, there's been some follow-up to this. And down in um, Palmer, Mass, yes, Palmer, Mass, um, they have not taken his house yet, and it's been almost two weeks since they said that they were kicking him out and taking his property. So, so I don't know the, if that's a the, good sign. Maybe they're turning the other cheek. Maybe the people who call themselves the town of Palmer, Mass, were bluffing after all. I mean, I think Jay, I hope so. Jay points out that <laughs> they didn't really follow their own civil rules of civil procedure and the true. prosecution of the case against him. Uh, I don't think that's unusual. I think that that probably occurs rather frequently. And so maybe once the town attorney got involved, he pointed out some deficiencies in their process. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, do you really own your property if the government can simply come in and... No, you don't. And that's, and that's the problem. So good for Jay for sticking up for himself. Yeah, I think uh, the fact that there was no signed order in that case and that there was no jury trial... All right, Jason. Our final video of the day features a gentleman named Mike Clark and the perception of changes that have taken place in Keene. The badge coder's face. Tell him there's no evidence. It's Mark Edge coming to you live from Bondsville, Massachusetts. I'm here with... Uh... Hello, my name is Michael Clark. I'm a townie, I guess. I'm, I'm born and raised here, Keene, New Hampshire. I'm 27 years old, so this, this hasn't been too long of a uh, period for the, the, the change around here. I, I remember people just being able to walk to the store, open container, as long as it was in the neighborhood. You know, they, they could go to the store with their last beer, taking their sip, throwing it in the trash when they get to the store, and go in and grab another six pack and be like, hey, thanks a lot, you know, and then crack one, walk back down the road, you know, and just go back to the bonfire or the barbecue or the... This is the events, the social events in the neighborhoods. Uh, it's, it's a lot different than it used to be. Uh, I remember a lot of uh, 
a lot of more, you know, neighbor, neighborly behavior back when I was a kid. Like, I remember feeling a lot more comfortable around everyone. Nowadays, it's kind of, people are skittish, don't want to be too loud, they don't want to be too active, they don't want to be noticed because the, the cops are really taking the fun out of being alive, really, around these areas. Even just going to the bar, you, you want to leave your car at home so you don't drive drunk. And uh, you'll be walking home from the bar and they'll harass you for public intoxication. And it's like, well, you know, I didn't drive. You know, I'm trying to avoid driving drunk, but I can't even walk home drunk. That doesn't make any sense, you know, to me. I mean, like you're trying to do a good deed by not driving, which they encourage, but still they harass you for public intoxication. I don't, I don't understand it. Just an average person being responsible. I mean, yeah, you're intoxicated, but does that, does that mean you're looking for trouble? You're, try, you're trying to find your way home to go to bed. You know, that's what you're trying to do, but no, you're gonna get a ticket, <laughs> you know? Yeah, before and after my impression, like, uh, well, my impression being a townie, I got the first impression like most people did around here. Like, I thought it was negative. I thought it was just like, okay, I'm gonna go do something illegal to get arrested just to, just to show my point that I don't think it's, it should be illegal. And to me, I thought that was kind of dumb because every time I got arrested, I got, I got the utmost discipline for it. You know, hanging out, you know, actually listening to, you know, the views and the, uh, you know, actually just having the idea of moving to New Hampshire to be free because it's a, it's a free state. And, you know, like, it just, like, brought me back to when I was a kid to where, yeah, it is a free state and there is a lot of things wrong. Like, I, I appreciate the, the, the free state movement because it's, it's making people aware that there is, there is something wrong you know, with what's going on here, not just in Keene, but in New Hampshire and, you know, the United States, that, you know, there's, there's being a lot of push and shove, like, you do what I say or I'm going to take you here, you know, and it's like, well, why, you know, like, why, why do I have to do that? Well, now, um, experiencing this whole free state movement, I would, you know, I would, I would, I would say, well, just think about all the complaints that you have about, you know, paying your property taxes, about the, the system getting pulled over all, all the time for no reason. You know, all the complaints that you have against the system, the free staters are there for you to help you understand that. I mean, like, if it's not working for you, if the system is just, uh, you know, pissing you off, you can go to the free staters and ask them questions and be like, you know, is there anything that I can do about this complaint that I have? Well, anybody that, that knows me, you know, knows who I am, but I would definitely say uh, to, to, to look into it, uh, to copblock.org, to uh, Liberty on Tour, freekeem.com, you know, I would definitely support looking into it, just if you have any questions, just see if anything interests you, because it's, it's pretty cool stuff, and there's a lot of things that you, that you got to complain about that you do every day that you, you might be able to change just by looking into it. This is Clarkie from Keene, New Hampshire. Remember to keep it real, live free or die. Peace out. Thank you so much for watching tonight. We hope you found the show valuable and informative. Send any tips or comments to tv at freekeen.com and tune in at 7 p.m. next Monday for more news from your area. I'm Jason Repture and this is Free Keen TV. Shh. <laughs>